Alright guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Um, so if you guys are new here, my phone's on loud. If you guys are new here, my name's Jason and uh, I run a small trucking company currently just working by myself, which I am hoping to change here. Uh, within a month, I'm looking to hire maybe some owner operators on. I have way too much freight that needs moved from direct customers that I can't take care of. Um, and also have a few other hotshot companies that need help and uh, I'm willing to uh, take on some owner operators and uh, you know work on if you're current what I'm okay so what I'm looking for is someone who is experienced has their own equipment and just wants to be treated better more freedom and you know self dispatch I'll get you a dispatcher whatever you want better percentage breakdown I just need reliable help so if that's you I'm looking for probably CDL hotshots at this point uh, but if you're non CDL and you're willing to stay out on the road I may be able to uh, may, may be able to work with that so but that's not the point of today's video I wanted to just get that out of the way um, also the patreon still live I'm getting people every day saying how thankful they are that I helped them get into the business they're showing me their progress and that's just, it's good to see you know I like seeing people make money there's plenty of it out here for all of us but uh, let's get into the video because I was just on my phone I'm um, actually headed to uh, pick up a trailer right now in the Ford and uh, just had this thought because I just had a message um, and somebody asked me what the best CDL trailer is or non CDL trailer excuse me the best non CDL trailer They're looking to get into the business they wanted my opinion so um, I'm not going to talk about brands really because they're they're all made basically with the same parts. You know, all the wearable parts are built by the same companies like axles, bearings, brakes. All that's built by the same companies. It's it is what it is. But we're going to talk about three factors, and we're going to talk about usable space. We're going to talk about versatility, and we're going to talk about weight. So. Um, first we're just going to start with usable space. The bigger the trailer you can get, the lighter it is, the better off you're going to be. Because in the hotshot world, not all the time, but most of the time where the word hotshot came from, it, it's expedited, dedicated freight needs to be there now. From the oil fields, it's where it all started. And with the oil field stuff, it could be one piece of pipe or one valve or whatever that weighs less than a thousand pounds, and it needs to be there right now. So that's perfect for a non CDO hotshot, uh, but sometimes that piece may be 40 foot long. So if you have a 30, um, a 32 foot trailer, you're not going to be able to haul that legally, you know, based on the overhang. Um, at 36 foot, you'd be you'd be okay with your allowed four foot overhang. But what if that piece is 42 foot long? So usable space, and it's not only when it comes to the deck itself. You know, if you have the option to put a lighter like deck on the neck option and give you more usable space, why why would you not do it? Say you get a customer where you're hauling. Uh, insulation for something light and you can you know put two extra pallets on the on the neck um, and bump your rate it the uh, you know the cost of the deck on the neck would pay for itself so the more space the better but point number two weight you don't want to sacrifice weight um, there are some very very heavy trailers out there on the market um, you know my aluminum three car trailer weighs almost half of what my 36 foot gator trailer does just to put that into perspective the you know the aluminum trailer is 48 foot long and the gator trailer is only 36 but it's almost double the weight um it's a heavy trailer it's built solid it's built to last but if you're running non-cdl that's going to cut into the the weight you're able to haul you know one thing that i had a saving grace with was that i have you know single cab cabin chassis I save my weight there as well so I'm able to haul more but you know if you're running a crew cab dually and your OTR you've got you know all the amenities to keep you on the road um, you know generator 
AC, whatever you may be, you know, using. You got tarps, you got binders. All that stuff adds up. Uh, so you don't want to, you know, start with a heavy trailer and then sacrifice all the things you're carrying or the amenities you have um, just because you started with, you know, quote unquote, the wrong trailer. And when it comes to the wrong trailer, I saw. I don't know where I saw this. Maybe it was another YouTube channel. I'm trying to think of who it would have been. I excuse me if it's who if it's one of your drivers that's someone here on YouTube. But the gentleman started out as non-CDL, but he had a tandem dual trailer that was between the truck and the trailer. He was only like he was at 19,000 or some odd pounds, so he's only able to carry 6,000 pounds and some change, and you know 6,000 pounds is not a lot of weight that's you couldn't even carry one crew cab long bed truck you're you're overweight so when getting into the business you just need to make sure you get the correct trailer now um, I also was thinking about this the other night because I have a terrible habit of browsing Facebook marketplace for things I absolutely do not need and I was looking at trailers uh, I'm still waiting to hear back on a trailer for my Freightliner that I purchased months and months ago. That's not on the road yet. That's a different story. But I, f I came across a 48 foot all aluminum flatbed and if I almost just was thinking about just buying the trailer because um, it would be perfect for what I do with, uh, with all the truck beds and whatnot. But something of that nature I think the trailer was like 5,200 pounds empty or something so if you pair that with the right combination of truck you have a lot of um, you know a lot of usable weight of what you can put on the deck you also have a bigger deck you're able to you know accommodate those light bulky loads stuff like insulation or even you know certain type of you know one piece of steel that's 40 couple feet long or, or whatever it may be but when it comes to that, you got your uh, usable space, you've got your weight, and now versatility. So, versatility, and when I say that, I mean like, what can you do with your trailer? Because with my 36 foot trailer, it is a little too small because I have all this, you know. All this weight available to me but the trailer's a little too small but that trailer is perfect for it's got a winch on it it's got mega ramps and that gives you the option to you know outbound freight and the option to bring back cars or you know small dump trucks or whatever like stuff I use it for uh, you know if you get a, a 40 foot flat and having to load cars constantly on 10 12 foot ramps over the back um, it, it's not bad but it's until you get used to it it's a little it's a little scary and it doesn't take much for a ramp to slip or something to happen and you have a car fall down you hit the front bumper and you have a, an extreme you know claim against your insurance so things like if you're planning on doing both freight and some vehicles having something like monster ramps mega ramps max ramps whatever trailer brand you have and then being able to put a winch on the trailer and just give you more options of what you can haul you're going to be better off and you're going to make more money so i figured i would just make a video about that because i i get to ask the question all the time and it's easier for me to just say hey reference this video so thanks for watching today guys don't forget to slap a like on the video and we'll see you on the next one